Ladies and gentlemen, the Iowa locker room is now open. It's probably safe to say the Villanova locker room is open as well, and we're joined by head coach Fran McCaffrey, as well as student-athletes Mike Gazelle and Nicholas Baer. We're going to open things up with questions for the student-athletes. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll send a microphone in your direction. First question for the student-athletes from the University of Iowa. If you have a question, please raise your hand. There's one in the middle section to the right of the aisle. We'll open things up with Max. Um, uh, Max Bonsetter, Sports Associated for Kids. And this is for Mike. Uh, congratulations on an outstanding career at Iowa and a great season. What was the most fun about being a senior on the Iowa basketball team? Um, you know, first of all, thank you for that. And you know, I had so many memories throughout my entire career. Um, just being a senior out there, um, just enjoying every day and how close our, our team was this year. We had, you know, 17 guys that really came together this year. And it, it made all the success that we had throughout the season that much more fun when you're playing alongside guys that, you know, you feel like they're your brothers. And so it was, it was a blast. And, you know, it's a season that I'll, I'll never forget. Continuing with questions for the student athletes from the University of Iowa. There's one on the right side toward the front. Go ahead, Len. Len Robbins, New York Post for both guys. I know it's difficult after a loss like this, but what did you find most impressive about Villanova in that first half? We're going to ask Mike to take that first, followed by Nicholas. Um, I'd say they did a very good job of, of moving the ball. and. Um, I think we didn't come out with the intensity defensively that we needed um, against a team like that. They're a team that is very unselfish. Um, you know, they just play within themselves. And, you know, we, we turned around a little bit the second half, but, you know, that was, that was most impressed with the first half. Nicholas, same question. Yeah, just to echo Mike, I would say that they did share the ball very well. Um, that was, that's what sticks out to me. But also, I thought their activity level defensively was very, very good, and um, you know, th I thought that they did a really nice job of getting into us and pressuring us, but um, like, t like Mike said, I thought they shared the ball really well and that they pressed us well. Continuing with questions for the student athletes from the University of Iowa, student athletes only at this time. Another question on the right side toward the center. Scott Dockerman, Cedar Rapids Gazette. This is for Mike. I mean, I'm sure after four years, you're kind of your Thoughts kind of circle all the way around from when you came to Iowa now that you're leaving. Uh, what are you going to take away from your experiences at Iowa and how you've helped change the program and better the program over your career? Um, you know, I, I think there's too much just to put it into <coughs> one answer. Um, you know, I look at the player I am now compared to where I came here and the person I am now. Um, you know, I've improved in, in so many ways and coaching staff has really helped me he me grow as a person and you know the the strides that we made every single year uh, was a lot of fun and a lot of fun to just be a part of and you know we have a, a bright future here at Iowa we have a lot of young guys that you know play the game the right way and they're they're a close knit group and you know I'm going to be very excited to continue to watch them next year and, and throughout the years Continuing with questions for the student athletes from the University of Iowa. If you have a question, please raise your hand. There's one on the right side toward the front. For Tom Mary, AP Radio. Obviously, it's disappointing to be eliminated today, but can you characterize the season as success, getting to the NCAA and winning a game? We'll ask Mike to take that first, followed by Nicholas. Yeah, I mean, you pretty much play your whole season to make this tournament. And, you know, obviously you're competing for a conference tournament, you're competing for or a conference championship, um, but you're also trying to make this tournament. And it's a very hard task just to make this tournament and let alone win a game here. So, you know, I'm very proud of my guys, the way we handle ourselves all season. You know, the season's a grind. There's a lot of ups and downs during the season. And we just kept plugging along, kept working hard every single day and getting better every single day. And, you know, it's, it's a great accomplishment because, you know, every team in this tournament is a, a very good team. Nicholas. Yeah, it's a great honor to play in the NCAA tournament. And it was a goal of ours from the beginning of the season. And, you know, it's sad that we had to 
you know, lose today, but I was just, I'm, I really enjoyed playing with these seniors, and I'm going to miss playing with them. We have time for one more question for the student athletes from Iowa, if there is one. There's one all the way in the back to the right side. Hi, guys. Congratulations to Andrew Rosario on New York Beacon. Can you just talk about your head coach and what he means to this team, what he means to you guys as individuals? And again, we'll ask Mike to take that first, followed by Nicholas. I mean, Coach McCaffrey means a lot to me. Um, I grew up in Nebraska, so I wasn't even thinking about coming to Iowa when I was younger. And Coach McCaffrey got the job, and the first thing he did was come up and see me at my high school. And, you know, he really had a vision, vision for myself and a vision for our team and how we'd have a chance to really re rebuild a program. You know, Iowa was once one of the premier programs in the country, and we had been down a little bit in recent years. So he was selling me on that vision. And I knew there was going to be something special here. I knew the guys he was bringing in, and, you know, I know he's had success at so many different schools. And, you know, I wanted to, to play for Coach because he's a guy that just gives you the ultimate confidence as a player. And I knew that he would allow me to grow and allow me to get better every single year. And, you know, that's what was the best part about making the decision to come to Iowa. And, you know, that's one of the be best decisions of my life. Nicholas, same question. Yeah, a pretty sharp contrast to Mike, all I ever wanted to do was come to the University of Iowa. And, you know, I grew up in Bend, North Iowa, where, you know, there's Tiger Hawk bumper stickers on just about every car. So um, Coach Caffrey, he gave me the opportunity to walk on here and gave me a, an opportunity to play here, which is all I ever wanted was to wear a Hawkeye jersey. So. I can't say enough about the opportunity Coach McCaffrey gave me to achieve my dream. We'd like to thank Mike and Nicholas for joining us here in the main interview room. They're going to he head back to the locker room right now, which remains open for another 15 minutes or so. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you. We're opening questions now for head coach Fran McCaffrey. If you have a question for Coach McCaffrey, please raise your hand. And there is one on the left side in the front row to start things off. Hey, Fran, Bob Groats, Delaware County Daily Times. You played some really good teams this year. Where does Villanova kind of fit in there? I mean, you, you've seen them before, but now after playing them, how do they fit in, and, and how far do you think they could take this? I mean, in a, some type of assessment. You know, Bob, I, I, I really think th they can go a long way. Uh, they're a really difficult team to guard. Uh, and a lot of times really talented offensive teams play defense in spurts, and they don't. They, they play defense uh, equally as well as they play offense. You know, and I think you heard it pretty clearly from, from our guys that, you know, they've been impressed watching film and then playing against Villanova, how they share the basketball. You've got a lot of really talented guys. You've got a lot of guys with strong egos. But it's clear to me that as a group, you know, Jay has got those guys committed to one thing, and that's playing together and winning. And I think that's evident in, you know, their, their success over the years. You know, it's not this year. It is this year, but it's last year, the year before, the year before. I mean, there's a winning culture there that, uh, you know, says a lot about the character of the individuals on that team. And I think if you, if you possess that kind of character, then you have a real legitimate shot to advance in this tournament because that's what you need. Now, it also helps when you have shot makers and you have some depth and you have some athleticism and some size. I mean, they got all the pieces that you have to have, but there, there's a lot more to it. And so I, 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 you know, I would say, you know, to you look at the really good teams that we played this year, so many of them in our league, and we played a lot out of the league. We played Notre Dame, we played Dayton, we played, you know, Michigan State. Uh, you go right on down the line, all the teams in our league, Maryland, uh, Villanova is a team that uh, that I look as an elite team, but I, I, I look at them more as an elite program, I think, than anything else. Continuing with questions for Coach McCaffrey, if you have a question, please raise your hand. There's one on the right side toward the center. Fran, uh, in this, in late in the first half, when they really started to make their run, what was happening defensively that was enabling them to get some open shots and makes? Well, they they. Uh, our, our closeouts weren't as crisp as they needed to be, we, you know, because they're, they're a tough group to close out to because they'll rip and drive on you. So you're, you, we, we closed out a little bit short, and they were making threes. All right. The, the, we had a couple uncharacteristic turnovers 
that led to easy transition layups. I mean, that was a big part of it as well. Uh, we didn't get to the offensive glass in the first, we did in the second half. In the first half, we didn't get there enough, which was critical because we didn't shoot it well enough. You know, sometimes if you don't go, if you're shooting it well, that's one thing, but, uh, you know, I'm a little bit more pleased with how we played in the second half in terms of getting to the glass, taking care of the ball, and, and executing our offense. But, you know, that said, we still shot two for 12 in the second half from three. And, you know, it's hard to come back. You got to make threes. You know, we, we had good looks, at the, look, good looks at it from three. If we could have made a few, you know, maybe it would have been a little bit different. Continuing with questions for Coach McCaffrey, if there are any, please raise your hand. We'd like to thank Coach McCaffrey thank for you. joining us in the main interview room. The Iowa locker room remains open for.